Hey, how's it going YouTube? How's everybody? Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Uh, I know it's been a long time since I've done a video. Been really busy making juice, getting new products, stuff like that. Um, first things first, welcome to the my very first vlog slash blog. Rambling at the mouth, let's talking about things but at the end of the video I am going to be doing a uh, rebuild on the e-grip RBA base section for the for the e-grip and uh, we're just gonna be talking about a lot of things all right first off I gotta do some shout outs um, gotta do some shout outs to some some uh, pretty cool people that I just met not too long ago. Uh, first shout out goes to Melanie. Melanie, thank you so much. We talked today and we are going to talk tomorrow. Harley, thanks Harley. Joe, um, gonna do a shout out to Blake and we're gonna do a shout out to Michael. Um, and all my new subscribers, thank you so much. Um, I know it might not be a big deal to some of you out there, but I hit 120 subscribers. It's kind of a big deal for me because just, oh, I don't know, a couple months ago I was sitting at 20. So it's kind of a big deal for me. Um, my biggest video so far um, that has just taken off like wildfire is uh, the Aspire BBC rebuild that I did for the... Uh, Aspire Nautilus Mini and the Aspire Nautilus. Um, so far, I've got over 13,247 views on it. A lot of people have shared it. I want to thank them people. I want to thank you guys so much. You guys are doing great. Um, I absolutely love doing this. Um, there, I am going to be doing some more rebuild uh, videos. Um, I've been fooling about with the... Uh, Aspire Atlantis. Um, I've already rebuilt them coils and I'm still tinkering with it. Um, I know I've been saying um a lot, sorry. It's hard to talk into a camera. Here we go. Um, here we go again. <laughs> Let's see. Got lots to talk about. Um, first off, I did pick up the. Uh, the Limo by E-Leaf. Um, love this tank. It's a great tank. Um, it's, <laughs> I mean, I love it. It's right up my alley. I can rebuild it the way I want to. And uh, it puts off great vapor, great flavor. Um, let's see here. What else? Uh, I'm going to be doing a video on the uh, Goblin. See if I can get this in here. The Goblin by UD. There was a lot of hype in a couple of videos that I watched about that um, rebuildable tank atomizer. Um, it is a dual coil rebuildable tank atomizer. Um, I kind of rebuilt it like some of the other guys did with uh, some 26 gauge, and it just for some reason it just wasn't throwing off the uh, flavor like I wanted. Um, I mean the vapor was there. The, the flavor just wasn't there. So I switched it up and built a couple dual 28 gauge coils, micro coils, just regular micro coils and the flavor just boom picked up huge big time. I mean, it's a, it's a nice little tank, you know. Um, if you have any kind of problems or whatever, the, the, the way it's constructed, it's kind of a pain in the ass if you have to get at your coils and work on them, if you have a short or something's wrong or whatever. You have to hold the glass down with your fingers and then unscrew this top cap, and you have to keep that glass held down because there's the only thing that's holding that glass in there is the pressure between the uh, the base and the top cap so you have to keep pressure down so you don't lose your juice and then pour your juice out um, the limo 
is the same way. I mean, if you got this thing plumb full and you just don't like the flavor or you want to change the coil or whatever, uh, the only thing that keeps this glass uh, in place is the pressure between the top cap and the base. That's a big con to me, kind of. You know, I mean, it is what it is, though. But, <clears throat> pardon me. <clears throat> what else here? Oh, uh, sub tank, sub tank, sub tank, sub tanks. Um, I haven't done a review on this yet. I, I plan on it. I have the, uh, I've had the Atlantis for quite a while. And there was all kinds of talk about, uh, you know, the, the flavor of the Atlantis wasn't as great as, you know, the flavor between the, uh, the Delta II or the, uh, the, the, the Kanger, uh, uh, mini sub tank. Now, in my personal opinion, this is just me, I just think the Aspire is just giving off just a little, and this is just my opinion, people, okay? You don't have to take my word for it. I think the Aspire gives off just a little bit better flavor. Now, I do have all three. I do have all three. The Delta II, the Kanger Mini, and the Atlantis. And uh, and we're going to talk about this. I, I love this little tank. I loved it so much I bought another tank. And I it's still in the box. I haven't got to it yet. But uh, I'm going to take a bait. Don't get me wrong. The flavor from this Delta is, is really good. I mean, really good. Um, I just don't think it's as... In my opinion, I don't think it's as good as as the uh, as the Aspire. Just my opinion. I mean, it's right. I mean, it's right up there, right up there. But uh, so far, I'm really liking this Delta. Um, I do not have the RBA base for it yet. I'm going to order it um, and see if it's you know has a little bit better flavor than the stock coils that come with it. I'm running, um, I believe it's a 50-50 juice I'm running in here. Yeah, 50-50 juice that I'm running in here. And it's the same juice that's in, and, and that's the reason why I did that. I put the same juice in this Delta that I have in the Aspire, and I wanted to compare the flavors. And like I said, I'm getting just a little bit better flavor out of the Atlantis. But don't get me wrong, I love I love the, the Joytech Delta II also. And I do have it sitting on. The uh, I stick 50 watt, and I'm running it 35 watts, and that seems to be my sweet spot right now with the and video coming on this little bad boy too. I love this thing. I've had it for a couple of days, and the battery life is just phenomenal. I mean, can, can you see the battery? I mean, it's just barely down at all, just barely. I mean, running two days on, and I. This is the one I'm picking up more and more, you know, because I, I've been wanting to, uh, you know, check this Delta out. And I, I, I really like it. Um, also, we're going to be talking about the, uh, the IPV Mini version 2. I got that the, uh, in the other day. Now, I'm going to clear something up right now. Um... Everything that I'm showing you, I buy myself, I purchase myself, and I am not big enough, nowhere near as big enough as Rip Trippers, Twisted 420, or anything like that on the vendor sending me stuff. Nobody's ever contacted me, and I'm sure they won't because I'm not that big. I've only got 120 subscribers. But, uh, like, I just wanted to throw that out there that, you know, Everything that you're seeing, I bought myself, and what pays for that is me making my juice. Um, selling my juice is what pays for everything. Um, got this in the other day. It's the new uh, Kanger K-Box. 
Gonna be doing a video on that. Goes from 8 watts to 40 watts. Now, I was kind of skeptical about this at first when I ordered this and when I got this. Um, for one simple thing, there's no charge port on this at all anywhere. You have to take the battery out. It holds a single 18650 battery. You have to take the battery out and charge it up on, on your charger. Which is not a big deal for me because I have lots of batteries that are already charged. I just take one out, throw one back in. It's not a big deal, but it might be a huge con to some of you guys out there that that are not, uh, you know, that don't have the, the, the battery chargers. But to me, it's not that big of a deal. Um, got good clicky buttons. Um, I'll hit this again and see if you can. There, it shows your battery strength on the on the uh, one side, and it shows what wattage you're running. I'm running this at uh, 30 watts right now. Um, one of my favorite little atomizers. I've done a video about this. It's the UD IGO W4. Absolutely love them. I've got two of them. I, that's how much I love them. And as you can see, and I'm sure you hear it, um, this little K box is putting out pretty good. I'm, I'm really kind of impressed with it. Um, I've just been messing with it, haven't been really screwing around too much with it. But, uh, just got it in the other day and I'm, so far I'm impressed I like it uh, let's see what else we got to talk about here um, I did get in now I'm not gonna go through all this whole bullshit again with uh, clones versus authentics um, I did pick up a clone of the Derringer Atomizer. I love this little son of a bitch. I love it. Now, I have been looking and looking and looking and looking for the authentic for probably a month now. Every place that I've gone to is sold out. I did get an email from Vapor DNA stating that they were back in stock. I went on there. I mean, not, I mean, not as soon as I got done looking at that, went online to check it out, and pfft, they were gone. I mean, like that. That's because this little, uh, this little thing just hits good. The flavor is phenomenal. Um, you know, I would love to have an authentic. I wanted to buy an authentic, but when you cannot find them and they're not accessible. I'm gonna buy a goddamn clone. I'm I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. I like to buy authentic stuff if I can. But when that shit's not accessible, how in the hell can you go out and buy it? I'm not gonna wait around for no two, three, four months, six months to to get one. I'm gonna buy the clone. Plain and simple. But anyways, I'm gonna take a little toot off this. I mean, this thing is awesome. Mm, mm, mm. I'm running a, running a 1.6 ohm coil, and I got it running at 25 and a half watts, and the flavor is just banging. I mean, banging. I got, uh, I got my homemade uh, berry crunch in there. Let's see. Uh, oh, what is it? A 70/30. VGPG mix. Um, I finally dropped my nick level. <laughs> I was at 18 milligram for so long, and I finally dropped it down. I'm down to 12, and I'm thinking maybe here in a couple weeks I might drop it down to nine. Um, I had kind of a sinus infection for a while. That was another reason why I didn't do a video. Um, that's the first sinus infection I've had in over a year. 
since I've been vaping. I haven't been sick. I haven't had nothing. Uh, I guess it was bound to happen. Oh well. I got over it quicker by vaping. If that if that explains anything. But uh, yeah, I absolutely love Derringer. I'm gonna be doing a video on it and a build. I'm gonna do a build. Um, like I've said in some of my other previous videos, I'm a single coiler. Um, I'm running a single coil in here. Like I said, 1.6 ohm. Let's see if we can get a close up of this here. Let's see if it'll focus. And kind of. But for what it is, I love this little thing. Um, I'm probably going to order another one. And I got this off eBay. I'm probably going to order another one. I don't know how close it is to the authentic. When I get a chance to buy one, I probably will. And maybe do a head-to-head. -head. Who knows? We'll see what happens. I need a drink of Mountain Dew. All right. What else we got going on here? I think I covered just about everything of the videos that I got coming up. Um, let's see here. Um, like I said before, I did a uh, I did a video on the uh, E Leaf E Grip. I liked it so much. I went out and got another one. I mean, I love these little things. Um, they're just perfect for what I like. Flavor is great. Vapor is good. Suits me down to a T. All right. Um, what else are we going to talk about here? Uh, looking at my... Uh, now, I do see, since we were talking about the uh, sub-ohm tanks, I do see that there's a couple more out. But the one I really wanted to talk about and that I haven't gotten yet, and I'm thinking about it, I don't know is the uh, the mellow sub ohm tank um, BBC tank by eLeaf it's put out by eLeaf which is a sister company to Joytech and it they have their own they have their own coil heads but they look exactly I mean exactly like the Aspire Atlantis coil heads. Uh, the only difference is, and I know Aspire just came out with their new coil heads. Uh, uh, they have the organic cotton in them now. The Mellow Sub Tank by E Leaf, like I said, uses, and it does say right on, I'm on the, va the Vapor DNA site, and it does say uh, the Mellow coils are also compatible with the Aspire Atlantis BBC Sub Ohm tank. And by looking at the pictures, folks, it, I mean, it it looks pretty much, pretty much dead nuts on the Aspire uh, Atlantis tank. The only difference I see is at the base, um, instead of having the uh, Cyclops hole, you can see the Cyclops hole on that. It looks like on their base they have... Uh, three individual holes I don't know I haven't really messed with it like I said I haven't got one I, I'm thinking about getting it but uh, Vapor DNA has them in stock and you want to talk about a good price 20 bucks 19.99 for that tank and I believe it has the same capacity as it's got 3.5 mil capacity tank. Um, they recommend you run the coils between 20 and 30 watts. Um, let's see what else. It comes with a uh, glass drip tip. And it comes with two 0.5 ohm BBC coil heads. And they are, let's see here. Yes, they are wicked with organic cotton which is a good thing so anyways like I said I haven't got one yet 
but uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to move some of this stuff out of my way and we're going to get down to doing the rebuild on the e-grip RBA base. We'll see you in a little bit. Okay guys, we're back and things I'm going to be using today. I'm going to be using a screwdriver equivalent to a 564 drill bit, scissors, 28 gauge cantal, some fingernail clippers, and the little tool that comes with the e-grip, and then you have the uh, the e-grip uh, RBA base, so you can uh, pulse your coil and check your ohms and and uh, stuff like that. All right, let's get started. Take the uh, I need a paper towel here. Try to keep everything in the camera here if I can. I'm gonna clean this out so it don't leak all over the place. Here we go. All right, first things first. I'm gonna take the uh, little tool they give you and we're gonna unscrew. Now I'm gonna focus this down just a bit here. There, be easier to see here. I'm going to try to keep everything in the camera if I can here. And here we go. Come on now. Little slipper sucker, here we go. We will set that off to the side. And this is the little guy here we're going to be uh, looking at. Let's uh, try to focus a little more light over here. There we go. This is the RBA base for your e-grip. Uh, hopefully, good. Here come. We'll take the top cap off. That's a little top cap. And yeah, she's a little grungy in there. So about time to rebuild it. And it also has a little like barrel section here if you will set this down and I'll show you this barrel section now it has four holes in this barrel and that's how your uh, that's how your e-juice that's how your e-juice comes through and get your wick all wet and juicy and awesome flavor and all that good stuff now to show you what this deck looks like it's a little mini K fun deck and I mean it is little guys but uh, we're gonna put a new coil in there new cotton new wick whatever you want to call it and I will be using some um, uh, Japanese cotton so let me uh, let me go uh, rinse this out, take this build off, and then uh, I'll uh, show you how I do my uh, coil, and we'll install it, and all that happy stuff. All right, be right back. Okay, we're back. I got the old build off of there. Kind of let you take a look at this uh, base here. You can see the air hole goes all the way through, right? Okay. Um, now, I really haven't had any problems with this thing leaking unless you do, like, blow by. I mean, if you're blowing out the end, uh, you know, vapor is going to come through here at the end, and then you get a little bit of juice that comes out the, the bottom here when you do a... You know if you do a little bit of blow by other than that I haven't had any problems with this thing leaking whatsoever um, I wear pocket t-shirts and I usually just throw it right up in my pocket and uh, you know it is what it is um, it has little holes if you can see the little holes there and I'll try to point them out let me get my little dental pick here might be a little you can see the holes right here. There's one on each side. 
kind of hard to see here you can get the camera angle there we go there's one on each side and that's where you put your wires uh, you know your wire through for your coil um, well, right now we're going to I'm gonna back this up a little bit and we're gonna wrap a coil here now we're going to wrap what uh, what rip trippers and everybody else calls a standard micro coil it's not going to be a regular micro coil where the coils are touching it's going to be a standard micro coil where the where the wires are spread out a little bit and once we once we do it i'll show you exactly what i'm talking about um i did have a regular micro coil here that i could compare it to i still do i just need to find it it's up here on my messy ass table but anyways we're going to get to uh, building this here um coil uh you want to leave about okay you see that oh probably good two and a half maybe three inches of wire and we're going to do 10 wraps all right here we go and we're going to space them out a little bit we're not going to have them touching There's 10. Alright. Now, we're going to uh, take a pair of pliers here and just kind of straighten these wires up a little bit, these uh, leads. Just give it a little, just a little tug, tiny little tug. And we're going to, now you can see they're that's kind of what you want but we're going to tidy this up we're just going to push it up against now if you can see that it's still not the way I, I like it but we will fix that I'm just going to take my thumb and I'm just gonna spread these coils out just a little bit I'm trying to get this on camera best I can here yep here we go spread them out just a little bit here stretch them a little bit and then we're gonna push them back that's a great thing about Canthal is it's so flexible okay just gonna you want the leads both going the same way um, you both want it you want them both going down not one going the opposite way or anything like that and I know you're thinking God that's a big coil on that deck, but really it's not that bad. Let's spread this one. Just squeeze this in here a little bit, a little bit more. There we go. That's tidying up pretty good. That's basically what you want right there. They're not touching, they're spread out, and that is a standard coil. Now, then what you want to do as I hold it with my finger like this and we will focus down a little bit that might help and take a pair of pliers and we're going to make a 90 degree turn here just like that if you can see it see that 90 degree now that might be it looks like it's a little close so I might straighten it straighten this out a little bit here that's the first time I've done this on camera now, off camera I can do this no problem okay, we can grab it right about there that's 
still looks a little bit. There we go. Give her a 90 degree turn. Just like that. All right. Let's see if I can focus in on this here. That's what you're looking at right there. Just give it like a little 90 degree turn right there. And then I will take my tweezers, tweezers, nail clippers, and I will just about the length of the uh, of the coil here and just give it a little snip get rid of that excess now I will do the exact same thing on this side and it don't have to be totally perfect guys I know this is kind of hard to see because I'm moving in and out blah 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 but what you don't see so I can see is I got my uh, <laughs> jeweler's glasses so I can see because I've got terrible eyesight all right, we're going to try this here. And give that about. That looks about right. Kind of tweak this a little bit. And that's what you want right there. Now you want to leave one of these leads a little bit longer than the other and I'll sh and I'll explain why when we uh, install it here okay now grab your RBA base here and I need to put this on I need to put this coil on the, uh, the 564 throw bit to just kind of help st st for stability here okay now Take the one with the long lead and you're going to shove it through. Oop, don't go anywhere. Let go. Let go. All right. Now, what I like to, I don't like to shove it all the way. If you can see that. I don't like to shove it all the way close to that. All right, close as close as you can to the uh, terminal there or whatever, and then we're just going to tighten this down. Now you don't want to do it too tight. Because these screw heads will snap your wire and then your coil shit, and then you got to start all over again. Okay. Now that that's done, where did I put them? Here they are. I'll take my wire snips and I'll get in as close as I can and snip that lead off. Okay, let's put this down. All right, let's come on, camera, focus, 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 focus. There we go. All right, so that's what we got. So, next. We're going to take a pair of tweezers and we're going to grab this lead and we're going to just manipulate that in there into the next, into its hole there. Get in your hole. Get in your hole. There we go. Now, you might have to take and push your finger and push that lead in just a little bit. Now, I know it looks a little wanky right now, but it will. And then tighten down your other lead. Okay, but the great thing about, like I said, the great thing about Canthaw is you can tweak this stuff. Now put your screwdriver back in there, kind of give it a little twist a little bit and raise it up. Little twist and raise. Let's see if you can see this here. A little twist like this and raise it up. 
Now, let me remove these jeweler's glass. I'm going to put this down for just a minute. Put my jeweler's glasses down. Because all the close-up work is pretty much done. Now, this is focus, focus, camera. There we go. This is what you got left. Okay, now it is hanging off the deck of just a little bit, but that's not a big deal. Uh, when I got this RBA base from Joytech, it already had a pre-installed coil on it, and it looked exactly like that, exactly. Now, as you can see, uh, I'm going to pull this up just a little bit more, but that's essentially what you got right there. All right, and I am going to try to clip this other lead as best as I can. Uh, we don't want that hanging out. You want you want that lead there to be clipped. So, see if I can get in there. There, that's a little better. There, that's a little better. Now the leads are. That one was just a little bit too long for my liking. Because yeah, otherwise it might touch the barrel and short out. And we don't want that. So, let's uh, tighten this down just a little more. On both sides. Alright. Give it a little twist. A little lift. And voila. There we go. That's what you want right there. See, it's just just barely off that deck. And that's that's about as good as you want. And it's pretty centered. I might try and take and uh, center that a little bit. That looks a little better. Oh yeah, much better. There we go. We got that off the deck. We, it's plenty good. Now, the reason why you get such good flavor with this is because that airflow is hit, that air is hitting that, and it's so close to the deck on that. You know, so that's why the flavor is so good with this. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this 510 adapter that you have to have for this. I'm going to take the cap off. And you set the RBA base inside there. You put the cap back on. A little twist. And we're going to... I'm going to use my Segele 20 watt here. And we're going to pulse this coil. I'm going to turn this light away a little bit here. That might help. There we go. We're going to pulse this coil. And that's looking good. I mean, it's going from the inside out. Okay. Stick the screwdriver back in there. And just give her a little lift. A little twist, a little lift. And that's what you're looking at. Okay. That's perfect. And it's ohming out at 1.4 ohms. Um, now I do believe the coil that I got with this, when I got the RBA base, it was a 1.2 ohm coil. So 1.4, 1.2, uh, it works good. I don't see any hot spots or anything like that. She's working like she's supposed to. Okay. Now that that's done, Take this RBA base off, and I'm going to just put it back on the ohm reader um, to do my cotton. Get rid of, sorry about the arm. All right. Let's screw that back on. Now this says 1.5. I don't know. Either this is this is wrong or the Segele's wrong. I'm thinking it's probably a Segele. But anyways, 
1.4, 1.5. Who gives a shit? It works for me. All right. Now let's move some of this stuff that we don't need. Get it out of our way. Okay, I'll set this down. And we'll grab some of this organic cotton. I'm going to back this up just a little bit here. There we go. Now, what I do is I take, and I just eyeball this, guys. I'm just going to cut a little strip. About yay big. Don't have to be perfect or anything like that. We don't have to worry about that. Now, I don't leave this completely full, as thick as this as this is. See how thick that is? What I do is I take about that much off. Yeah, that's about right. And then we're just gonna twist the one end. Give her a little twist. Alright. Now let's get some light back on the subject here. Here we go. Alright. It's gonna give her a twist. Cut that end. I'm just gonna feed this through. Just like that. And that's perfect. You don't I mean there's a little bit of a restriction, not a whole lot, but that's what you want. That's perfect. Now, what I do is I take the ends, I kind of just fold them up like that, and I just slide the uh, slide the little barrel down. And give her, give her just, a, just finger tight is all you need. It don't have to be super tight or anything, guys. Just like yay, like that. Now, next thing I do, and I just gauge this because I've, I've rebuilt this a couple times. So what I do is I kind of just, where this cotton ends up, where this, where this, the side of this, this base is, I just kind of, right there. The same thing with this side here. Just give her a little snip. And that, that's about what you're looking at, what you want. Maybe that might be just a little too much. Maybe just a little too much. So we'll just take just a little more off that. And there, just a little more. I know it didn't seem like a lot, but you know what? it was to me all right now i'm going to grab my little flathead screwdriver here and i'm just going to kind of kind of poke this down and kind of come on get in there i'm just gonna poke it down and try to make it go from like the middle here to the middle here, all the way over, you know, all the way around. Just like that. Now, it looks harder than what it is, guys. All right, we're just going to do a little close-up here. This is what we got. Focus. Come on, camera. Focus. There we go. Um, you just want the cotton, you know, just to kind of kind of fill up all the way around the, the, the quote. 
pretty much. And then next thing we're going to do, if I can keep this in focus here. Let me. I'm gonna squeeze down just a little bit there. I'm going to get the juice that I'm using, which is a really good juice that I make myself, and it's a cranberry apple. Really good. Okay, and then we're just gonna saturate this here, and you can get this coil. Just like that that's about all you need to do for right there all right we'll take this off here bring it back out a little bit here and we'll put it back on the Segele and give her a little test fire here I see vapor. Oh yeah. Looking good. All right, next. Kind of take our finger and push some of them little ends in or whatever. And then we're gonna put our top cap back on. Just, just like that, just finger tight. You don't really have to be that tight. Okay, take her out of there. We'll set that over there for right now. And we're going to bring the e-grip back in. All right, that's it, guys. For I mean, that was it for the rebuild. Slide that back in. Grab a little tool. And twist her back up in there. Oh, ye tight. And we need to put a little juice in there. So we're going to open up the door. And we're just going to squeeze some juice in there until you see the juice come out the other side here. Boom. Just like that. Done. Now take the paper towel. Hey, don't fire that. <laughs> Well, she's working. You heard her fire. Had the button pushed. All right. Got her back on. We got her full. And we got vapor. All right. We're going to go back up, vape on it, talk about it, and then we're going to wrap this up, guys. Hey, we're back. We're back, we're back. And that's about all there is to rebuilding that. It's not that hard. Um, if you can do a if you can do a micro coil, you can do a standard micro coil. I prefer doing the standard micro coil. They seem to last a little longer. Um, gives off great great flavor, great vapor. Um, let's take a vape. Working like a charm. Working like a charm. Um, if you haven't got one of these and you know you're just starting to get into rebuildables, it might be a little difficult for you. But um, if you're already into it, this should be no problem. It's a standard little K Fun deck. Um, you, you know, I had no problem with it when I when I did my first one. Um, this is probably the third or fourth time I rebuilt it, something like that. Anyways, guys. Um, that's about all I got for you. Once again, I want to thank all my new subscribers. Thank you very much. I hope you like my videos. Um, I hope that I captured everything I needed to capture so you could, you guys could see what was going on. Um, please leave your comments and let me know what you think. And we'll catch you next time. Vape on, guys.